Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another League of Legends video. This time I'm doing a why buy on Cassiopeia. 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 Cass Cassiopeia. I'm not sure which one it is. So I'm going to go with both of them throughout the entirety of this broadcast. But uh, she is the Serpent's Embrace and also Katarina's sister. Uh, quite the snaky looking figure. Kind of a Medusa theme, which I think is very... Very interesting, and just the way that her snake body moves when she's rolling is just very, very interesting. Uh, pretty cool character overall, but um, uh, she's she is quite a powerful, powerful mage, capable of some of the highest DPS in all of League of Legends, I would imagine. I don't know, I haven't really ran the numbers in like a real game situation or, or done a lot of the math, but um, she's. I would say that her closest comparison would be to someone like Karthus, or maybe Rise, a champion who uh, is a mage, AP-based, but is capable of putting out tremendous sustained DPS. She's not a really much of a burst mage, although she does have solid burst. Uh, she is more reliant on damage over time, and she has a she has a very strong requirement that you link her spells together properly in order to get maximum damage output. But uh, gonna give my uh, jungler here a little bit of a leash and run over to mid lane. We've got uh, top lane Jax, myself in the mid lane is Cassiopeia. Uh, and then Fiddlesticks in the jungle, and then bar bot lane is Ezreal and uh, Karma. Karma, I actually think she's not a very good support, not my favorite support, but uh, that's that's none, neither here nor there. I'm facing against an Ezreal mid lane, looks like he's going towards a blue build, as I believe he started with some AD. Um, they have a Vayne, and I think Lee Sin is on support in the bot lane. Uh, Udyr in the jungle, and then uh, Rise in the top lane. And just to let you guys know, this was... Uh, I picked this game more for its entertainment value, not so much that it was kind of the most dominating uh, Cassiopeia performance. Specifically in lane, I had a bit of trouble with this Ezreal. Uh, he was just very slippery and just seemed to have my number. Um, and uh, But I felt like as the game went on, uh, it was very entertaining game, so I thought that, that hopefully you guys would enjoy that. Um... But uh, anyways, let's talk about Cassiopeia. Like I said before, she is an ex has extremely high sustained DPS. And let's talk about her skills and abilities and explain why. Um, she her, her passive is Deadly Cadence. Uh, the basic idea here is that uh, if you if you cast spells consistently over a period of time, uh, the the cost of those spells will go down by ten percent. You see, I'm getting ganked here, and unfortunately, uh, giving up first blood to this Udyr and. Uh, so very poor, oh, almost able to get that Udyr there, but but overall a bit of a mistake there. I saw him, he was sitting on my ward, I was trying to, one of the things that I try to do when the jungler is sitting on a ward is waste his time, uh, but that gets tricky when they go on you and kill you, so you definitely don't want to do that, but a bit of a mistake there, but we'll run back to lane and keep going. But anyways, back to her passive, Deadly Cadence, this is a crucial part of her kit, she very much is a spammer. Um, and, and like I said, very much relies on linking abilities and spells together. Um, you can see right there, it's throwing out a Q and then throwing out an E. Um, and I'll explain as to why I do that later. But uh, you can get up to a, a total of 50% reduction in mana cost, uh, which is quite significant and really lets her, like I said, spam her abilities, which is crucial to her gameplay. Um, so you want to have this passive up, stacked up high as much as you can. Uh, you're going to want to buy a mana item probably for sure, maybe a tier or a chalice. Um, but uh, you, And then at that point you really are going to want to um, make sure that you, you are spamming those spells to keep that passive nice and stacked up high. Uh, but it, yeah, it's a pretty core part of her kit. Um, allows her to spam. Next up is her Q, Noxious Blast. This is uh, about a... It, it's, I guess I don't really know how to describe it. It's kind of a uh, targeted... You target the ground in a small circle in the in about point... I believe it's point... Let's see here. After um, point six seconds, the area will erupt with your venom, um, and then uh, the target will be poisoned and take damage over three seconds. Um, so you can see I'm actually using it there on that minion wave to, uh, to get those guys down. You can see that little green blast. That's her Q. Uh, it's on a very short cooldown of two of three seconds, 2.8, with some standard uh, cooldown reduction. Uh, so very spammable, and this is really the core part of her kit. Um, her kit very much relies on applying this poison, um, and then using your E to kind of lock on and and uh, sustain your spells. So your Q is a your very core part of your kit. Uh, it also has a cool um, 
utility component where it gives you a movement speed buff if it hits a champion, uh, which is fairly significant, up to 25% over 3 seconds. So a pretty significant movement speed buff if you hit an enemy champion. So it makes her an excellent chaser. Um, and you can also use this to get away. You can just throw those cues out as people are chasing behind you and use the kind of mini ghost-like ability to get away. Um, and also this ability is damage over time. It does um, a base damage plus ability power uh, over 3 seconds for a total of 235 base damage at max rank with 80% AP, which is quite a bit of damage, uh, quite a nice high AP ratio. Um, and because it's damage over time, it really... Um, it, it really allows one of the core items in her kit to be um, Leandry's Torment to get because that burn damage ap applies every second that you have damage going. Um, you can see Fiddlesticks going for a gank here. We'll see if we can finish this. Ezreal trying to throw out some Qs. Not actually able to land on that, but a very nice sphere. I'm going to use my ulti and finish off that kill. Actually, Fiddlesticks got the kill. But anyways, that's her Q. Uh, like I said, this is a core part of your damage combo, very much the initiating part of your damage combo. Um, and then it allows you to line up your other spells as well. Um, I like to get a lot of points in this first and, and max it alongside my E, saving my W for later in the game. Um, but it's nice in lane for poking, um, and then you can chain together those E's afterwards, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and, and just the damage over time is very nice. It's your primary farming tool as well. Um, and one thing that you can do is it does have initial damage, and then it will tick down over the next three seconds, and you can use that initial damage to kind of last hit the minion. It's a relatively low uh, initial damage, but uh, it, do it, does, it does work for last hitting, but uh, it's not the best last hitting tool, but it is kind of your core farming tool. So blasting that back wave of minions with your Q is probably the best way to farm, but very much a core part of her kit. Uh, next up is her W, her Miasma. This is a uh, interesting ability. It does a number of things for her. Basically, she throws down a small circle on the ground, and then over seven seconds, it will actually grow in size, um, and it will deal, deal magic damage to any champion who's standing in that circle um, during the duration. It will also slow them, and it will also reveal anything in the Fog of War. So a ton of, a ton of stuff packed into this ability. Uh, it will also apply poison, similar to your Q. Um, so your Q and your W are your primary ways of applying your poison for your E, which I'll talk about in just a second. I've already said that like six times. Uh, but I actually have not taken any points in this. It's a little bit situational as far as when you want to actually take points in it. Um, but uh, it's, it's not so useful early on. The mana cost is relatively high, and the damage is relatively low just because people are rarely going to just sit in your W for an extended period of time. It's more useful in team fights. It gives her very, very strong space and zoning control. You can see I'm getting ganked here again. I'm going to try to use my ultimate and flash away, but I did get ignited, and so that's going to be the end of my life. So poor, so good job by Udyr, and a poor job of myself of reacting to these ganks. So far, Udyr is 2 for 2 on me, which is not where I want to be. But anyways, the W, uh, I would say that it's best used for its utility, it's for its zoning, um, and for applying poison is also a very primary way in which you want to use it. Um, so next up is her E. This is really the core part of her damage kit, Twin Fang. Um, it is a single target nuke, just deals base magic damage, um, but the thing, the trick about this ability is that if you are, use your E on a target that has been poisoned, the cooldown is reduced to a half second, that's right, 0.5 seconds, uh, which is extremely low. Uh, so the basic idea is that you want to, you can see I'm using it right there on, the, on that minion, uh, the basic idea is you want to land your Q and there's an E, um, so you want to use your Q and your W to kind of apply poison to your target. And then you want to use your E for your sustained primary. You can see I'm using it to just annihilate that back minion wave. And because all of those targets I'm hitting are poisoned, uh, the cooldown is reduced to 5 seconds. And again, this, this, this uh, syncs very well. Her kit is very synergistic in that way. That um, there, it, you, you're using your passive to give you the mana sustain because you're going to be spamming quite a number of E's in a row. Um, then you're using your Q and your W to apply the poison, which does that damage over time, and you're using your E to really be the damaging spell. Um, and a couple things to know is it's important to know um, ex how long the target will be damaged for. Specifically on your Q, you really want to know that uh, it's a three second um, uh, tick of poison, so you can theoretically get three shots of your Twin Fang off, um, 
There is going to be a little bit of a delay just because there's a cast time and there's a projectile speed that it takes to get there. So you can generally um, get two, get three. I kind of generally just try to do two just because um, oftentimes, you know, by then my Q will be back off of cooldown. So I tried my Bane combo is Q, E, E, Q, E, E uh, indefinitely as long as I can sustain that. It's a really nice damage combo because you're getting the ghost effect from your Q. You're getting the cooldown reduced because there's uh, they're ticking with poison, um, and then you're getting that constant E spam. Uh, the base damage is not that high; it's at only at 190, but um, the AP ratio is at 55, which also is relatively low. But when you think about it, that it's on a a uh, five sec I'm sorry, a half second cooldown. It's five seconds if you do not land it on a poison target, but it's on a half second cooldown. Because it's on a half second cooldown, you could probably get two or three of these off. So then you're looking at almost, um, let's see, if you get three off, you're looking at 600 base damage plus uh, about 100 and, what is that, 170% AP ratio? I mean, the damage is just ludicrously high. Uh, if you are able to consistently string together Qs and Es, it, I mean, her damage DPS, like I said, is some of the highest in the entire game of League of Legends, just for this simple fact, that if you're able to string together a series of Q's and E's, you can very easily bring a target down uh, to absolutely no health. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you really want to make sure that you're trying to do that. And one thing about this too is 5 seconds seems like a short cooldown. But with Cassiopeia's playstyle, if you accidentally shoot an E onto a target, like in the middle of a team fight that is not poison, you are probably just going to be uh, fairly worthless because her kit very much relies on sta on chaining together Qs and Es. You want to make sure you're always throwing out an E onto a target that has been poisoned. So your Q and your W are your primary ways of applying poison, and then your E is your way of actually getting the DPS. Um, so you are always want to make be very, very conscious that you're not just throwing out Es randomly, uh, because you'll be sitting there for those five seconds, and you'll only be able to throw out Qs, and you're, you're really lacking a huge chunk of your sustained DPS. Uh, so you're so you really want to make sure that you are getting that as much damage as you can out of your E by uh, only using your E on targets that have been poisoned. Uh, next up is her ultimate. Uh, this is petrifying gaze. It, there you can see you used it right on Ezreal. Bit of a derp right there. Uh, and actually, I remember this part very specifically. I really messed up this combo and ended up dying. That was a very much a failed use of that ultimate. Uh, but like I said, I think I picked this game more for the entertainment factor than the fact that it was good gameplay. Because that, for sure, was a definite mistake. Not how you want to play this champion. But anyways, let's talk about her ultimate. Uh, Petrifying Glaze. This is this is Gaze. This is really where she gets the theme of um, being similar to a... Uh, what are they? The Greek Sirens, I believe, or a Medusa-type character. Uh, the idea is that in a cone in front of her for 80 degrees to the distance of 850 units... Um, E enemies that are looking at her will be stunned and dealt damage, and then enemies that have their backs facing away will only be slowed. Uh, and it is an AoE ability. The, the range is relatively low. 850 range is not very big. Um, and I would say that in general, you want to be close range, and you want to make sure the targets are facing you. So some of the best times to use this ability is when enemies are chasing you, and you just kind of stop and turn around and use it on them. Uh, so right in this situation, they're chasing me. I end up flashing over the wall. Um, kind of a messy team fight, I remember this one being. But uh, you want to always just try to save it for the moment when enemies are all kind of flooding in. So this would be a perfect time to use my ultimate if only I had it up. Um, which I think I maybe did, but I just failed. Uh, but you really want to make sure that the enemy team is, is facing you. So it works as a fantastic disengage. Um, or you can you can kind of flash in and get it off before the enemy realizes what's going on. But its its best use is for kind of a disengage to turn the fight around. So you can you, one of the best ways to use this is to kind of allow someone to bait uh, the enemy team into you, and then while they're chasing you, you kind of come in close and immediately get that ulti off to to stun them. But I will make sure that I point out uses of the ultimate. This ultimate can be a real game changer. Uh, it has the potential to be extremely strong. Any sort of AoE stun, I mean a two second stun and an AoE, the potential to lock down all five members of the enemy team is is incredibly powerful. Uh, the, just the potential of what it can do. And like I said, the ability to disengage is very, very nice. Disengage, I would say, in solo queue is very, very valuable. Just because oftentimes people will get themselves in bad situations and they'll get themselves into bad team fights. Um, 
And so uh, you, dis a, a good disengage is extremely useful and valuable uh, in its ability to save your team when they are doing something that you do not want them to do. Um, but like I said, you really want to make sure that you are using it when people are looking at you. Um, because, yeah, otherwise you're not getting the maximum use. The slow is strong, but the, the stun is really what you want this ability to do. Um, so those are her abilities. Her kit very much uh, centers around applying poison with your Q and W, getting the damage off with your E, and then your ultimate is like your, your primary source of utility and lockdown, and it really kind of sets up the kills for you, just having that AoE CC. Um, but uh, yeah, so the overall that's her kit. Um, I would say some of her, her main weaknesses, to kind of move into that section right now, is that she's relatively short-ranged, and she also is very, very difficult to play. I would say that along with Lee Sin, Cassiopeia probably has one of the highest skill caps in all of League of Legends. Uh, because, like I said, if you miss a Q, um, then you're pretty much your damage output has been extremely just restricted and cut up in half. You, you are very much missing, you know, because you're not going to get those two or three E's off, so you're missing a ton of potential damage wasted in that situation. Um, you know, so you really need to make sure you're consistently landing your Qs, which is not, the Q is not an easy spell to land. It has that 0 0.6 second delay. Um, and so it, it is a relatively difficult spell to land. You can see using my ultimate there for the slow and allowing, uh, to pick up the kill on Ezreal. And you get in landing my Qs off, trying to lead the target just a little bit and allowing the ghost to keep me in range. But, uh, you really need to make sure you're landing your Qs and then chaining those E's. Um, and it's a very hectic playstyle. Like, uh, there's a lot of thinking and micromanagement that goes on. So if you struggle with kind of, uh, you know, quick decision making, if you struggle with the kind of a frantic type game play style, I don't think Cassiopeia is going to be a very good choice, just because she is so reliant on uh, making quick decisions, on uh, you know being very, very quick to make the right choice to, to bring the right tar correct target selection. I um, mean, see right there, I kind of got messed up right there trying to go for that vein and I end up paying for my life and now Fiddlesticks is going to die as well. But that fr that frantic gameplay style we are constantly, I mean you've got your your Q is on a 3 second cooldown, your W is on a 9 second cooldown and your E is on a half second cooldown. So you have extremely low cooldowns just built into your kit. Um, so you're constantly, you know, your brain is just frantically playing and trying to keep up with what your your mind needs to be doing. Um, and, and, and like I said, if, if she is short ranged, her, her Q has an 850 range, her W has 850, her ultimate is 850, and then her E is 700. All of this is relatively short range for a mage. Um, and because you know, she has sustained damage, you're going to need to get in close and stay in close. Um, so you're going to be in, you know, kind of the pseudo auto attack range. Um, see it right there, first game of the time of the game, using my W on the ground there to po consistently poison that blue golem and just shred that sucker down. Um, but she is relatively short range, and you do need to stay in close range if you want to, um, you know, get the maximum damage output you can. But she has great, tremendous strengths. Like I said, she is possibly the champion in the game who has the highest DPS potential. She's got an AOE CC ultimate. She's got, you know, a, just a ton of damage without necessarily having to build a ton of damage. I like to prefer to build her as more of a, uh, a mage bruiser. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the build path in a second, but uh, she just has a lot going on for her in her kit. Um, great zone control as well. I see there's a nice use of my ultimate, the stunning two of those targets immediately blow up both of them. Um, even though I died in the process, I got a really nice ultimate off there, which allowed us to take down their two frontliners and uh, ultimately, hopefully, take this turret. Um, but anyways, talk, let's talk a little bit about her build. Uh, Cassiopeia, because she is short-ranged, uh, she's going to need to be a little bit more defensively. Building straight glass cannon is a little bit risky. Um, and she also is probably going to need a mana item of some sort just for to maximize. You know, because she, she is so dependent on spamming her spells, you know, even though her Q has built in mana, um, kind of mana conservation, you still are going to probably want a mana item. So in this game, I go in for a tier. Uh, you could also do a chalice and do an Athene's and Holy Grail. I would say both of those are good options for early on. Um, I prefer the tier just because I'm a little bit accustomed to it, but uh, I actually am stacking it quite well up to already 516 at the 24 minute mark, uh, but just getting a ton of spells off really allows you to stack it quickly. She is a definitely a good candidate for an early tier. 
from there, I like to go into a Haunting Guise, which will eventually turn into a uh, Leandry's Torment. Um, but like I said, because she does damage over time, I, bu I'm, I don't exactly know the exact mechanics of Leandry's, but I believe, my assumption is that a damage over time effect is amplified uh, tremendously with uh, Leandry's Torment, because it does 2% of current health, uh, that's the passive component, and if you are doing a damage over time, that means that you're getting that 2% consistently. Over and over again, you're getting 2%. Repeatedly, 2%. So if, if your Q lasts for 3 seconds, that's actually a total of 6% of current health over time. Um, and then with your E as well, you're getting that. So it's, you just have the tremendous amount of, of opportunities to proc the passive from Leandry's. Um, and then Rylai's also adds, because uh, I believe that there is a second proc from your... Um, from your Landry's when you get the Rylai's because it does the slow, and I believe that that slow effect will actually uh, count again. They're another good use of my ultimate, able to burn down Udyr, picking up the kill right there, getting not helping another kill out onto Lee Sin, trying to chase down on this Ezreal, but Ezreal is very slippery. He's a very good champion against, because uh, he can just E out of my Qs. But so uh, core items uh, that I already covered, we've got tier. And then we've got the uh, the Haunting Guys and the Leandries. I got it earlier this game just because I had the right amount of gold for it. Um, and then um, I also believe that I'm going to pick up a Rylize at some point just to get that slow. Again, giving her even more utility. Um, and it's also nice. It synergizes well with her kit. If you get the Q, if you land one Q, uh, you gain not only the Ghost, but you also get the slow, which will uh, allow you to get, to land nice a good string of E's and then land another Q. So, it, again, there's a lot of synergy there. And then, again, you're getting the constant burn from your Leandries, you know, because of the damage over time and also because of the slow from the Rylai. So those 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 two, three items right there work very, very nicely as her core. Um, the, the, the tier for the mana, the Leandries for your primary source of damage, and then uh, your Rylai's for your, your utility, your tankiness, um, all of that is in the end and just giving you even more opportunities to proc your Rylai's or your uh, your uh, Leandries. Um, after that, I also like to go for a Zonius just because I do find myself in the mix quite often. I find myself in the middle of the enemy team um, because I have that little bit shorter range and especially to be with my ulti. If I can kind of get into the mix of things, get a good ultimate off, and then uh, get my DPS out and then Zonias while the rest of my team kind of gets in there to cl help clean up find that to be a very effective uh, item combo. Uh, Rod of Ages is also not a bad idea on her. Rod of Ages is kind of the, I think my definition of a AP bruiser item. Gives you mana, gives you health, gives you AP. All things that are nice. Specifically the mana synergizes nicely with a tier. Um, a tier plus Rod of Ages build. It definitely sets your damage back because you're doing a lot of scaling items. Um, both of those items are designed to scale into late game. But uh, it does give you, you know, the extra mana from Rod of Ages helps you to give you more damage uh, when you finally turn that tier into um, the completed item. There's a nice ulti on Udyr, but unfortunately I get picked up by an Ezreal ult, and my damage is not quite enough to help finish off that Udyr he had got. Oh my goodness, he must have gotten so low. Yeah, about f under 300 HP, so it's very sad days right there, but... Um, let's see here, Void Staff is always a good item on an AP carry. Uh, I tend not to go for Rabidons just because I feel like you get enough damage from Leandries and you need to go a little bit tankier on Cassiopeia and Rabidons just leaves you very, very squishy. So not necessarily my favorite choice. Uh, but man, I'm kind of a very poor set of team fights going on right here by my team. Um, it's kind of we're all going in one by one and just getting picked off slowly but surely. Again, uh, poor, poor stuff by my team. But uh, at this point, I have finished my Leandries. I've got a tier and I'm heading for a Zonia's. Um, I felt like the Zonias was very important. I'm just going to try to clear this wave. I'm going to throw out my W on the back line and throw out my Q and just try to clear out these minions as best as I can. I don't have my ult up yet, but once I do, I'm going to definitely feel be like I'm going to be aggressive. Uh, there I got a nice W off onto Rise and hopefully going to be able to track him down. I, I see him heading towards our blue buff. And if I can get a Q, I could really... There, I do get the Q off, and going to flash in and ulti to finish off that kill, just to really secure it. Um, but uh, I'm definitely happy to pick up that kill. I'm pinging now to get this Ezreal. Come on, Jax, come help me out, my friend. If I can just get one Q, there's a W to try to zone him away from me, but if I can just get one Q, there's the Q I needed, there's the E, and going to finish off that kill. The damage over time, like I said, is just so, so... 
uh, massive. The burn from the Andres, as well as the damage over time, and your ease. You just have so much damage at your disposal. Um, another thing to talk about with Cassiopeia is uh, you're definitely restricted by your mobility. So anything that you can do to help yourself be mobile and kiting is a strong choice. Um, so that, another reason why Leandris is really nice because it gives you the slow so you can kite a little bit easier. Um, but especially in lane, that's probably one of the biggest things about Cassiopeia that gives her a bit of a hard time. She is a little bit more immobile. Um, but she definitely makes up that with high damage, high utility, um, and, and I also would say she's very fun to play. She, her playstyle is extremely enjoyable. If you are able to correctly land those Qs and Es, I mean, you can just wreck people with your damage. Um, so, kind of as this game continues, we'll keep an eye on that. But So yeah, at this point in the game, let's just kind of take stock at where things are going. I've been talking a lot about Cassiopeia, but I want to start talking about this game. Uh, to this point, it's been a little bit sloppy. Let's kind of go ahead and bring up... Um, this list right here and just kind of line everything up as best as we can. I've got, I'm leading the game in minion kills, which is nice. Um, but so far I haven't really been able to get a lot of kills. I'm at 3 and 7, so I've been dying kind of a lot. Um, which, again, I think Cassiopeia is has a little bit more of a dangerous playstyle. It requires you to really get in the mix. If you're not quite used to it, it can be really be a, a bit of a struggle. But throwing off my ulti there, and now we're turning onto this uh, vein. And there's an E, there's a Q, and sh that is going to help finish her off. Um, now turning on to these guys, getting a nice Q, E, and uh, getting them extremely low. Ezreal, I think I did pick up the kill there with the burn. Uh, unfortunately, though, I missed my W, and Lee Sin kicks me out. So that's going to be the end of this team fight. So, But I did pick up two kills there and a couple of assists. I'm going to do a Zonia just to waste a little bit more time, but... Kind of a weird, crazy team fight there. But this game has been very wild. Uh, our top lane has been going in our favor. Jax is definitely ahead. Um, of this Rise, who has been quite behind, and he did pick up the new Banshee's Veil, which I'm not sure if he realized doesn't give you any mana anymore, so kind of a wasted item. Uh, but this Udyr has been quite a beast. He has been ganking my lane a lot, uh, really giving me a lot of troubles. Uh, but Fiddlesticks has been doing well himself. He has a quite a high number of kills um, and assists, but not that much farm. But he does have his Zonias, which is nice. That's really what his core item is. Um, I'm starting to ramp up. There, I just turned my tier into Seraph's Embrace, which is going to give me a huge AP spike. Uh, at, up to this point, my damage was not as high as it maybe could have been, just because uh, I hadn't yet to really, uh, you know, put... I had some early game items with the uh, tier specifically, and so not really able to get as much damage as I could. But here we go. Here's a nice team fight. Uh, going to really... There's a nice ulti under Rise. I, I think his Banshee's Fail ate the ulti. Um, which is unfortunate, but now I'm just trying to throw off as many Q's and W's as I possibly can, throwing out E's to pick up that kill. Um, missed on that Q, but overall a good little series right there, and we're up in, in kills and deaths. So, um, <clears throat> unfortunately though, their Vayne is quite big, and their Ezreal is quite big, so they definitely have some very scary AD carries, which was kind of the main reason for my Zonias, was that I felt like with their dual AD carry comp, and with Rise being behind, I need to really prioritize getting some armor and some ability to kind of survive these guys. So, um, but yeah, a little bit of, uh, we're, we're, we're definitely behind at this point. We're down about 6k gold, but we're really trying to kind of get ourselves back in this game. I felt like if we if we can team fight effectively, which our team fighting has been pretty good, uh, and we have very strong team fight potential between, you know, if we can get some picks with, uh, with Fiddlesticks specifically, and then my ability to kind of run in and really lock people down as well as Jax. I really felt like we had a strong chance in these team fights. Uh, but now I'm level 18 and I'm working towards my Rylize, I believe. Um, so give myself a little bit extra tankiness, which is very, very nice. Um, fortunately, they just got Baron to watch this. This actually, I need to rewind this. This was uh, one of the turning points in the entire game. They just got Baron and we did not know that, but we suspected it. Um, so kind of waiting. I don't want to face this, check this brush, so I'm going to let Fiddlesticks do it. And all of a sudden, we see the enemy team, and I get, I'm get i going to slow this down even more. Getting a nice three-man ulti. We immediately blow up Ezreal, and then we immediately blow up Lee Sin. Uh, just throwing out constant Qs and Es and trying to reposition myself. Um, now I see Vayne. She has presented herself, so I'm going to just QE her to her death. And now I'm going to turn on to Rise. Uh, he has flashes away. But uh, I want to I pause this and go back again, because this team fight was really the turning point in the game. Uh, with Cassiopeia, target selection is much like an AD carry. I found that you don't necessarily want to be someone who's diving. 
you want to make sure that you are getting as much damage as you can off from safety. So right here, I see Ezreal, and they are just lined up so perfectly for my ult, throwing out my Q and my W, and just Eing whoever I can who's standing on my poison. You can see how many of these targets are poisoned. Um, Udyr is poisoned, Lee Sin was poisoned, Ezreal was poisoned. Uh, just getting as much damage off as I can. Now turning on to Vayne as she just presented herself and getting up that kill. So really nice uh, team fight right there. They picked up Baron, but they paid for it with their lives. We lost Karma, but we were able to pick up three kills. So hopefully we can get an objective off of that. Um, so overall, that was quite a nice stretch right there, helping to get a couple of kills and assists. Um, but the ultimate right there, you can really see just how game-changing her uh, Cassiopeia's ultimate can be. I was able to lock up three members of their team, including two, their, their two frontliners, as well as Ezreal. So a uh, big chunk of their uh, potential damage has, is lost. Uh, but now we're trying to just kind of get out of here um, as Jax is split pushing mid. And I'm just kind of trying to zone. My, my point at this time is, I see I'm getting free Qs off onto Vayne. And even though she's life stealing, uh, I'm chunking her down nicely. I'm uh, going to check no blue buff right there, unfortunately. But I've started to narrow that goldie. And you can see right here, this was a really cool duel. Um, and I do pick up the kill, but I'm uh, going to flash away. I want to watch this one more time because I remember this duel. This was very exciting. All of a sudden, Vayne kind of appeared out of nowhere. Um, and I've got my ulti up, so she co goes in for the tumble. And I, I think I ultied her the second before. I was able to uh, get it. And if she had actually just continued auto-attacking instead of standing in the poison, she would have killed me. Uh, but she did not. And right here, getting a nice pickup onto Lee. No! Cannot pick up that kill, unfortunately. But Jax is here to save the day. I thought my damage over time, plus the minions could get him. But he has some lifesteal and a Blade of the Rune King. So unfortunately, he wasn't able to pick up that kill. And uh, Jax ends up getting that one. Um, and just crazy team fighting. This, this, te this, te this game was a very wild game. Um, but there I was able to finish my Rylize. Good job by Ezreal to pick up that kill. Able to finish my Rylize, uh, which is very, very important for me at this stage of the game. So now I've really got a lot of my core build completed. Uh, Zonia's, Leandri's, Rylize, and uh, the tier into the Seraph's Embrace. So very, very strong right now. Um, not 100% sure what I'm going to look towards next. Perhaps I go Deathcap. But I feel like a little bit more of a defensive item, or maybe even a Void Staff, could be a better selection. But we will see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick up this blue buff here. Fiddlesticks wasn't too keen on giving me blue buffs. But uh, I don't really know why, because as Fiddlesticks, I realize he also uses mana, but it's just like, it doesn't really make sense. I mean, I'm Cassiopeia. I spam spells all the time. The CDR is nice. The mana, specifically, though, is crucial to my kit and gameplay. But... Whatever, it's all good, it happens. Um, you can see right here, I believe that one of my teammates got caught out, I believe it was Jax. And now I'm in a little bit of trouble, this Ryze really wants my blood. He's going to get a W, and I'm going to ulti to try to keep myself in the game, but I do end up getting the kill, helping Fiddlesticks get the kill onto Ryze, but a nice ultimate there from Fiddlesticks uh, to help clean up from that, that ulti that I threw out. Fiddlesticks uh, definitely was doing work. This game ends up getting that blue buff that I got initially, so that was kind of funny. Um, but uh, let's see, what do I go towards? I don't actually remember what my final item was. Um, but at this point, we've really started to close the gap. The gold lead is very close, but the real kicker is that we have a definite advantage in objectives. Uh, one of the things that I've found in some of these lower elo games is that you see it right here. Boom! Nice! Uh, able to get two kills right there. That was massive. Let's watch this one more time. I believe I was talking earlier about how you can bait people. This was the play, I think, that really turned this game. This was like the play of the game, in my opinion. Flashed in, ultimate, Q, W, E, 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 and they're all dead. Uh, just totally blowing those guys up, saving Jax's life. I want to watch that one more time, because that was pretty fun. I remember this play, and I was just pumped out of my mind. But Jax is going to die here. One more flash in, ulti, Q, W, and then a couple of E's, and get a, a couple of kills. So... Pretty fun right there, able to help save my teammate uh, and uh, get a couple of kills. So that was kind of one of the highlights of this game for me, one of the reasons why I thought this was a pretty entertaining game. But you can see right there just how effective her kit can be. If you can get those spells off, you can see typing, I'm typing in chat at this point, something about staying off my jacks. Uh, this Jax was a pretty cool guy, but uh, if you can really chain together those spells properly, you can do a lot of work. Um, but uh, throwing down a W, you can see I, that was a really good place for a W. Um, it really allowed me to kind of zone out Udyr and Lee Sin, who are hoping to just kind of stand in that middle area. 
Um, but I didn't want to let him, so I'm going to throw out my W as really nice zone and space control. It's one of the best things about that W. Um, so at this point in the game, we've really we've tied the gold, and we're really starting to shine. Jax is a very strong late game champion. Fiddlesticks is very strong if he's able to get a pick. And you can see at this game, they don't really have a true support. And Lee was not... I'm going to check their vision. Yeah, Lee really was not doing very much warding. So, uh, you know, with the, this game... These lower elo games where there isn't a lot of proper support play with good warding, uh, it really can lead to some picks, which Fiddlesticks is great at. And you see right here how uh, Cassiopeia is a fantastic champion for burning down objectives, uh, buffs, and also uh, Baron and Dragon. She is extremely good because they just sit there in her poison, and she can easily continuously apply. You know, like I said, one of the, her main weaknesses is that if you aren't able to land poison, her damage is just totally cut apart. But it, because they're stationary targets, you're able to get your damage off very consistently and easily and, and very uh, predictably. Um, so you don't really have to worry about that. So you can just totally unload damage on them and be totally unconcerned. Um, but again, more crazy team fighting. People getting cut out of position left and right. Uh, I've got a bit of a poor ultimate right there. It only landed on Udyr, but we do pick up the kill. Uh, and getting another kill onto Vayne, and can I get one more? Not quite. I'm a little low using the shield for my Seraph's Embrace. I was a little concerned Rise was going to QWE Q me. Um, but a nice stretch there going 3 for 0, and uh, feeling quite confident at this point that we really are turning this game around and have it in our favor. We're just kind of grouping up and pushing together as a team. You can see I did end up going for a death cap in the end. So uh, maybe as a sixth and final item, I think it's a solid choice. But uh, that battle mage is really, I think, where you want to be. If I if I kind of could have swapped it out for maybe a rod of ages, I might have done that. But at this point, I felt like I really wanted the damage because this game was turning into a bit of a game of picks. If you can get a pick on an enemy champion, that's really going to turn the game around. But there's the victory, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this game. It was not the best Cassiopeia gameplay, specifically in the landing phase. I felt like I made a lot of mistakes. But the, the later the game went on, I really felt like her kit was very strong and I was able to really contribute with some really nicely timed ultimates and also just able to really get off a lot of damage. Um, you know, she she's just has so, so, so much damage in her kit, um, which is very, very fun. It's really fun to play a champion like this, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Cassiopeia is a little bit under known and underplayed, but... Personally, I think she's very strong in the right hands. If you can handle the the play style, it's just very micro-intensive, very frantic, very uh, reliant on chaining together those Qs and Es. Uh, she can be so strong. A little bit of a lack of mobility, a little bit of a lack of range, which I think hurts her. I think uh, mobility is, is kind of king sometimes. But if you can kind of survive... Um, uh, I think you can really do well on her. And even though I had I died a lot, I think that was mostly due to the lack of mobility, getting myself in trouble, and then uh, compared with a short range. But uh, if you can get your damage out, she is so strong. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun playing this game and uh, getting Cassiopeia out. She's a fun champion to play. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you soon. Bye.